happy homestead is how are you doing today we can answer the first question can't we are we on today we most certainly are thank you phil for being here i've got a lovely picture oh, of okay. your pig that i'd like to show uh, in just a little while so thanks for being here phil thank you to everybody else who's already tuned in do you have any questions about getting out and growing because that's what we're all about here uh, the happy homesteaders here on get out and grow project a weekly live stream gardening q a session under the uh, leadership of our own king here of the garden that is head gardener lee mcgrady how are you today yeah great thank you yeah perfect. not happy with that title at all okay and um john how was your break uh oh hang on oh, blimey um you're unmuted already john uh okay sorry i thought i was muted as you could probably tell there from yeah. my we could hear uh, you unmute. Like... we could hear you trying to unmute yourself yes um, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm good. Uh, the break was very nice, actually. Yeah, I feel quite relaxed. Had some nice walks, uh, ate some nice food. Excellent. All around very good. Um, lots of traffic jams on the motorway on the way home, though, because of people going to um, the, the, the funeral for the Queen and, and going to look at the coffin as well Right. within okay. the last few days, weren't they? Which... I find a bit weird, personally, going to look at the coffin, but... Yes, yes, But indeed. yes, but we do... I've, I've found some interesting stuff, a couple of interesting articles anyway, on um, the royal family and gardening. Um, so we'll have a look at those later. Um, so, uh, yeah. Brilliant. All right, thank you for that. Anna, how are you? Uh, whoops, is he... Uh... Yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, I'm doing. Doing pretty good. I've been, um, yes, sort of busy, uh, busy work wise, and uh, yeah, just, um, yes, keyboard lesson um, back on again, and uh, just getting into the usual sort of post post summer um, timetable again, and um, yeah, I think yeah, weather's getting a little bit more sort of um, overcast and. That sort of thing, but not not uh, not in a cold cold sense at the moment. But um, yeah, just easing it's easing back great. into activities, keeping busy, and um, yeah, it's uh, yeah keep keeping uh, keep yeah just keeping busy when I can and uh, chilling when I can as well. Well done, excellent. Tell us, uh, you two are in England. What has the atmosphere been like today over there in the UK? Um, I'm trying to think. I um, I, I know I was watching a bit of the coverage a little bit earlier. Um, um, yeah, a bit earlier this afternoon, I think. And um, I, I have noticed the traffic um, being a, a fair bit quieter than usual. But um, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not ov overly um, overly sure. But yeah, it has been sort of quieter than it usually is for a Monday. Mm, okay, well, well, we'll talk a little bit about um, the new king's interest in horticulture because he's well known for his interest in the environment. And of course, we'll take your questions. And we're having greetings coming in from Matty, who I think was with a certain group of gentlemen uh, on Saturday night in Lisbon, from whom I received a very nice message in the early hours of Sunday morning. Thank you for that, gents. Um, Botar of the Growers, uh, says Matty. Did he eat quite a lot, Lee? It's not a cookery program, I know. Hello. Did Matty eat quite a lot? He tends to, doesn't he? he likes he's he's a bit of an animal. Yeah, he's a bit of an animal. Yeah. Yeah. OLP is it as well. Hi, Carl, Lee, Anna and John, and all the happy gardeners worldwide. Thank you, OLP, for being here. It's lovely to be back. Sorry we weren't here last week. John was having a break. I suddenly had a break and went over to Italy as well. Uh, not much to report. I was in Bologna, city centre, so I've not got a great deal to report about uh, horticulture in Italy, although you can tell uh, they love growing good food over there, and I, I, I ate quite a bit of that. Um, good evening, Botar, from Mark as well. Great to see you here, Mark, and Phil, who we've already said hello to, who's got some problems with bugs on his orange trees, or tree or trees. We'll see what we can do to get to the bottom of those, Phil. And uh, hola, hola todos from um, Jacqueline CDM is what I call her. Botar, or Boa Trade from you and some lovely pictures thank you so much Jacqueline CDM for those beautiful pickies from you and a bit of proud growing just down the road from me Botard Jardineros from T-Duck as well thank you for being here and John you might want to voice this yourself indeed so if you did forget to let Anna know about your question or have only just thought of one uh you can let us know here um right. because of course if there wasn't a show last week then um yeah, 
But it's it probably good questions. It might, might be a bit of a backup on the questions, mightn't it? Uh, let's see. Let's go straight to that first one that's come in then. And uh, Can I get a personal comment in first? Please do. Yeah. Up. I've got some snake plants for you. Get in really? touch. I know we've got a little group thing going on. Give me a call. I need to drop them off you because I'm getting sick of them in the house. So <laughs> give me a call. <laughs> there you go. Has he got your number? Well, I think we're on WhatsApp. Um, okay, so fantastic. You can, you can get hold of me. Yeah. Snake plants. Very good. Okay, so let, first first issue of the evening then. Um, we got some little black bugs in Phil's uh, orange tree. Uh, I don't know if you can see that closely enough, uh, Lee. What do you make of those? I, well, you probably you might know. I, mean, I, I, I really don't need to see the picture. I know exactly what they are. The yeah. one, the one all the orange trees at the moment. It's that time of year. Yeah. Um, it needs, um, as I've been informed while I've lived in Portugal, what he needs to do is give a light jet washing if he's got access to a jet wash or a heavy yeah. spray over with the hose pipe. Yeah. Leave it an hour, then a soapy water mix, uh, just enough so the um, washing up liquid is sort of uh, making small bubbles in his tank. Not, let me sang it right. Maybe three spoonfuls of washing up liquid maximum in a oh. full tank, and put the washing up liquid after you put the water in your pressure tank um, or a neem oil mix. They're all okay. they're all good this time of year. Yeah. All right, so but it's. Neem uh, Neem for the sort of natural organic people, washing up liquid like a detergent for those who, who aren't so uh, well, who don't want to do aromatherapy on their citrus tree. Uh, but a good jet washing and maybe play car wash in the background by Rolls Royce. <laughs> While you're soaping down your citrus tree there. John's enjoying that this evening. Um, excellent stuff. Let us know how that goes, Phil. And um, if you have... As much luck with your citrus as you do with your figs and grapes, which I can show everybody here. Uh, you very kindly brought these along to the Silver Coast meetup in San Martino de Porto. Lovely figs and a few lovely grapes as well there. And we already had enjoyed your plums earlier in the year. I've got some lovely produce to share with you. <laughs> What's he laughing at? Okay. Um, I... <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, oh, well, well, figs. Were, they, were they well developed this time of year? Yeah, it's, it's fig season, isn't it? Well, I, I still think a little bit hard yet, aren't they? It might just be a Lisbon thing. We've got them really, really, you know, that uh, sweet spot of the fig when you just get that little um, a little droplet of nectar because it's just so sweet and ripe that it starts to uh, almost I think, juice itself. I, I think here in Lisbon, they're, they're just about just about ready now. They're, they're not the first ones that are coming ready. I imagine the Algarve will be a few weeks behind. Um, wow, that's amazing. Okay, well, that's good to know. Nice. You can, you can, yeah, all, 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 um, variations. Yeah, superb. Well, they, those were absolutely delicious. We were eating it with the table, and uh, Nelson at Palmera Cafe didn't seem to mind too much at all. So, <laughs> keep up the good work, Phil. Good luck with that, uh, with the jet washing of your citrus. Um, before we share a few, oh, let's do Jacqueline's pictures because these are lovely. Talking of uh, Palmer in San Martino de Porto, and uh, we've got uh, Jacqueline just up the road. Very proud to have grown these. These are lovely blooms. It looks to me like a, a tropical garden that you've got there. I don't know what they're called. Some some others might be able to comment on this, but those are beautiful blooms. And then even more colour in your garden here. You've got a kind of a succulent looking thing um, with with quite a um, waxy leaf by the look of it producing some beautiful blooms there of different colours, all from, uh, apparently from the same, what is going on there? Well, how, how are you getting all those different colours of blooms from what looks like the same plant? Is that all coming from the same plant or are they different cuttings all mixed up in a single pot there? Beautiful, Jacqueline. Thank you very much. Do you reckon... Can, can, can we ask Jacqueline to send the name of the, the flower from the first image? Yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, this just, one here. I, just, Yeah, I can't quite wake out on the phone, but... I'm, a proper old trumpet, it, it, it really is. Yeah, I think I've come across them. I think it's a plant that's mainly in like the Azores and that yeah, way on. But they're becoming more and more popular. If it's what I think it is, it's becoming more and more popular here. And I just can't put my name on it. I just can't put my finger on the name at the moment. I'm rubbish. They're, they're like huge. That. They are huge yeah. and blousy. Yeah. A lovely, lovely uh, flower. The, okay. The, the vine it grows on looks like a, a cross between a honeysuckle and a um, a passion fruit. Okay. And I just can't, it'll, 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 it'll come to me. It'll come and to that me. makes sense. I can see the vine. I can see the vine in that picture. Yeah. Jacqueline may have a little bit more to say about it. Um, Anna, do jump in if you see anything in the group. You've been doing some fabulous posting as usual there with all sorts of information from the horticultural world. If there's anything, any one of those articles that you'd like to share this evening, do. 
And John, I think you've been doing a little bit of research on the royal interest. Of course, all the greatest gardeners of history, their top client was always going to be the royal family, wasn't it? Going back in time, if you go to the great stately homes of, of Great Britain, um, they are they, they patronise the greatest gardeners of history, I would say. Um, what, what have you found, John, so far, if anything? Definitely need you to unmute this time, mate. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'll just post it in the group now so it's easier to talk about in the group. But yes. uh, yeah, hang on a minute. OK, um, while you're doing that, John, somebody wants to ask you, uh, Anna and John, the following. What do you think is the most important thing you've learned over the course of the show? Um, do you feel more confident in gardening yourself? Please, des please describe your ideal garden. Where would it be? What would it what would be in it and what animals would you have? What fantastic questions. Now, do we think that might be Fiona there? It could be, couldn't it? Um, Anna, the question about which tools for what job wasn't answered, but I humbly suggest you do get out and grow. Do a get out and grow. <laughs> She's not suggesting you get out and grow. She's <laughs> whoever this is is suggesting you do a get we do a get out and grow special. I think, I think I might have got the question. I think it might have been Fiona, I think, because I've um Yes, I noted down what, what tool for what jobs and um, a pruning fruit trees video would be helpful as well. I think Lee might be able to help us with that because he'd just have to open right. it, empty the contents of his van. I'll, I'll just I'll just turn my camera around as well, show the fruit trees that need pruning. That's Carl. Um, that's yeah, I can, I can I can relate with both of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, excellent stuff. We'll, 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 right, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about fruit tree pruning in a bit because it's that coming up to that time of year. All right, never think about this, Anna and John, as well. Um, what is the most thing you've learned over the course of doing the show? Uh, do you feel more confident in gardening yourself? Please describe your ideal garden. Where would it be? And what would be in it? And what animals might you have? We'll come back to that. Give you a chance to think about that. Jacqueline says, it's a pink trumpet vine. I mean, we could have made that up ourselves, Jacqueline, couldn't we? Because yeah, it's pink. No, there's, no, there's, another, there, there's another name for it. It's good. It'll come to me after I see the show, and I'll spout it out. All right, brilliant. Oh, I'll well, message you about three o'clock in the morning, Cal, and tell you then. Thank you so much. Um, Barbara is a woman of few words. In fact, none. Uh, Barbara uh, Darville is in, and thank you for being here. And if you do have a question that you that you were too hasty in your typing to share with us, do try again, please. Uh, here we go. It's Pod, Podrania uh, Rica Soliana, uh, called the pink trumpet vine native to South Africa. Would you call it that, the Podrania? Pod, Podrania, yeah, yeah. Drink. Yeah, there you go. Thank you for that. Um, thanks, says Phil, for the citrus pressure wash rescue plan. Uh, it's a, a pleasure. And another question: Any experience with compost tea to build soil health biology? Fiona might want to chip in here, as may others. What do you think about compost tea and how to brew it, Lee? Well, you, you don't really brew it. You take your you take your um, your hardened compost. You put it into a bag. Well, not just hardened compost. I I do it with the with the um, the sticky stuff you can't really add to soil. Yeah. You put it into like a net bag and you leave it in water for as long as you can take the smell for. Uh, so it gets really pungent and then you can dip your water can into the bucket. It works really well. Um, it's, a, it's a really good way to make a nice, strong, natural liquid feed. Yes. But it does stink. It's meant to. You know, it's 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 the way it should be done. There's some serious microbiological action going on, isn't there, with a the compost tea? Now, Phil's got a, a rather large plot, so doing a little carrier bag full is not going to be no. Of much seriously, help. It, it, if you've got a large, we, we, the allotment we had in Rochdale was what, two tennis courts. It was it was it was big, and they had trailers and sheds on it, and two greenhouses. It was a a, a proper dodgy allotment, and mm -hmm. I had. Two large, um, maybe 150 litre water uh, containers. Yeah. And I would leave the bag in and then keep my water out. And when the water level got lower, I'd add I'd, I'd more water, add more, add more rubbish into the bag. And you can just sustain it forever. It would just, uh, you, know, you, okay. can just you can just use the same bucket all the time. When it rains, it tops up, it gets a bit weak. You add some more manure in or you add some more uh, compost in. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it, it did for a lot of time, yeah. Okay, so you make a small amount and use it as a cordial, basically, um, and mm. dilute it into your larger watering container. Okay, that's yeah. the word. Yeah. Thank you very much. As for the other plant, says Jacqueline, I don't know, uh, as I bought it exactly like it is, I love the mixed colours. 
They own they open during the day only. That's lovely when that happens, isn't it? Now I'm I'm feeling like I'm asking a silly question here. It's not the first time I've done that, of course, but um there's variegation, but there are plants with different colored flowers, Lee, on the same on the same plant. Is that a normal I I've never I don't remember seeing that before. It's normal now because they're being they're being um they're being grown for that very reason. And it's uh, and you come across it a lot when you go to the garden centres and you'll see a, a a container with four different colours on it. But when you actually take out the pot, it's actually four small plants in one container. Yeah, yeah. So okay. they kind of do it on purpose. Yes. Um, it happens a lot with geraniums where you got you look at a geranium pot and think, oh, that's got two different colour heads on it, but it's not. It's actually just two plants, two seedlings have been put in together to allow, it, right. to allow it to grow. Thank but the very get the flowers. flowers. The, the very get flowers have been, have been coming strong for the last few years and they're getting better and better. Yes. Okay. Thanks for that, Jacqueline. And you've sent a clearer picture of the big Podronia as well. There it is. It's beautiful. Absolutely lovely. Does it just? It is like being on Madeira or in the Far East when you see a bloom like that. Walk, I, I've got one on my street that I walk past with the dogs in the morning. It's, ab it's absolutely at its height of beauty at the moment. And I think probably the ra the recent rain and this humidity will uh, see to that. Uh, there is. Court. There, there, there is one variety of it where it gets a real long. Um, Sternum in the middle of it, and that gets a really dark red uh, colour into it. But if you get the pollen on your clothes, it's not going to wash off. It's oh, a bit real... like lilies. Oh, just like lilies, yeah, just like lilies. It's a real stainer. Yeah. All but right. You get the, the, the light, the pink ones, and the white ones aren't so bad, but the really yeah. dark, sort of dark red and dark pinks, they're, they're terrible for it. Yeah. Okay. Be careful with the podranias then. Uh, be careful what you're wearing, which we might we might bring workwear into the the tool special that we do. So um, let's go back to Fiona's question, which I think it is Fiona's question. Um, first thing to you, then to Anna and to John. What is the most important thing you've learned over the course of the show? Which of course might be horticultural, or it might be technical in terms of uh, doing show presentation and live streaming. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll break this down over the course of the show, but that, let's let's look at this first bit. What's the most important thing you think you've learned over the course of doing this show? Let's go to you first, Anna. Uh, I'm sort of think I, I think probably just um, sort of picking up a bit more um, knowledge about sort of gardening in um, other areas. I think, and um, yeah, just um, learning about new. Um, new plants i think and um yeah i know i've been sort of tuning into sort of um gardening programs on um television and sort of learning a bit more um about that as well i think and um yeah i think i think i'm just sort of getting um an idea of like sort of new plants i haven't been to any um gardens much lately but um but yeah i think i'm just sort of getting an idea of how many different types there are, I think, and just, um, yeah, just sort of getting to sort of expand the knowledge a bit more. Okay, so a knowledge boost for you. Thank you very much, Anna, and thank you, Fiona, for asking. John, what about you? This is a bit different as well tonight, isn't it? The tables have been turned. The questions are, are being yeah. asked. Oh. Yeah, this is quite an interesting one. Um, I'd probably say, uh, like, I'm more confident generally um like uh, so having more knowledge just makes me feel more confident um but what what have i learned specifically that's a tough one um because obviously i i knew about lots of the safety side before anyway um because i did a, a a gardening course at south devon college um gosh that must be back in the about, day well it was well over 10 years ago now Wasn't anyway it, right? but old time but, yeah that was years ago but that was that was pretty cool because they had like a a cops thing right up the top of the hill there that we sorted out um but yeah and there was a i i'm just trying to think i suppose i probably learned more most more about the community side of it mm -hmm. um yeah. it's that's probably the the biggest thing for me um well as in working with with the people all over the world here and in the group yeah and, and just working together generally because like i think i've tended to find in um like 
media portrayals of Gardner's, so not documentaries and things like Gardner's well, but if it if there's a a character in a in a sitcom or in a drama or something who is into gardening, they tend to be a bit grumpy and <laughs> you're like Lee. Thank you, John. Well, no, because I mean, no, Lee Lee's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Lee's always drunk. Well, didn't care. Uh, but anyway, yeah, they they tend to be. I I think you probably know what I mean. I, I do, I, I do. I mean, you, but it, you, you're a media student, aren't you? You, I think. Did, did you do a media studies degree or portrayal of disability in media? Portrayal so of disability you... in media uh, dissertation for my uni university. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so I guess you could you could use the same sort of observations about other stereotypes, couldn't you, in in drama yeah. and in media? And there is um, a stereotype certainly of a gardener, and Lee's going to tell us all about it now. I think. I'm sure John and Anna would be able to answer some of the questions that came in now, just from the knowledge of what they've gone over. I mean, it's a tough question to ask, uh, to answer, just off the top of your head. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. I imagine they've learned far more than they actually realise, uh, just yeah. from being here and and having the conversations every week. Um, yeah. And it's, it's stuff like that that you don't realise you've learned. You know, I you do it all the time. You'll you'll see something, you'll realise. A way of a method of doing it, and then you don't realize you've learned it until you actually need it. Um, yeah, yeah, well yeah, said. So it's a tricky question. Yeah, it is. And they've been really put on the spot, both you, John, John, and Anna. So thank you. And, and if you don't want to answer, you're perfectly within your rights to say that as well. Um, and turn and turn the microphone back the other way around. Um, but do you feel more confident in gardening yourself? Is, in, is the next part of the question. Um, what would you what would you say, Anna? Let's start with you. Um, I think I think when I was doing it regularly, I think I was starting to. I think um, I, I I think as far as like if I sort of pulled a plant out and um, it was a plant, not not a weed, and um, I sort of learnt that that was okay. And um, yeah, weeds are sort of just literally a plant just in the wrong place and that sort of thing. So I've um, I think um, yeah, I think I think like sort of um, trying to sort of work out like sort of um, what's causing problems with a plant or that sort of thing. Um, um, I've probably got a bit more confident in, I think. But, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to think back to when I... Maybe a bit more practical as well to complement this. Maybe, maybe, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. And what about you, John, um, in terms of uh, confidence uh, in gardening and yourself? Would you care to... I, I certainly feel more confident about gardening. Yeah. Not that I do a great deal. It tends to go to Mrs M., um and yeah it's i, I yeah, really but, enjoy working with but, you both on a monday but you can um, point at things and tell her can't you you've learned enough better point and say ah, then you're doing that, like, move yeah, it over there right. yeah and I, I kind of adopt a kind of head gardener type posture which i've learned from you as well so, so certainly uh, um uh, john confidence uh, in garden uh, or are you more of a sort of technical guy do you think a bit like me, a point. A bit of both I, I think i do have a bit more confidence in gardening now because of course I've learned quite a lot from from doing this. You know, you you don't uh, you, you know. I feel like um, with with gardening, I can start to think back to things I've learned here, or things and things we've studied and uh, covered in the show, mm. and be like, oh yeah, so I can do this to solve this, or oh okay, if I ask this on the show, then it'll get answered and. And I'm not then going to be worrying about oh if I put if I Google this is it going to tell me the right thing and all of that sort of thing because obviously like if you Google something it's not always going to be correct or hmm. yeah okay well I'm going to say yes um, to Fiona here I think we've all grown in our confidence and ability here um, and with the next part of the question which we'll come back to I'd like to extend this to everybody watching. Please describe your ideal garden. It's such a lovely question. I'm sure Lee would have something to add to that as well. Where would it be is a great question. And what would it have in it? And might it have animals in there? I've got a lovely question from Jacqueline now. Oh, good evening to Lord Gilchrist, who was also part of the, um, what looked to me a lot like a bunch of football hooligans, but I, I'll take your word for it. It was a it was a good evening. Uh, Botard from, from Lord Gilchrist. And good, you look like a lot of old casuals, you know, from West Ham United. <laughs> Um, uh, good evening from Simon as well and from Jacqueline. Uh, I need some advice, please. Beginner here. Uh, having never grown a veg in my life. Okay, this is fantastic. 
I never grown a veg in my life. Okay, uh, maybe some tomatoes once. I'm wanting to start with some basic veg. Oh, we want to help. What shall I start with? And what is the seasonal veg to plant at this time of the year, please? We've got an absolutely brilliant get out and grow classic case study here. I like the idea of a raised boxed area in the garden to grow the veg. So what are we going to say to Jacqueline? I think we'll start with you, Lee. Well, maybe Anna and John will jump in with this as well. Well, she's already she's already got the right idea. A raised box area. Keep it yeah. small. Keep it very simple. Yeah. Don't overspend on it. Don't go crazy with it. I imagine she's here in Portugal. Um, just, down the road, just down the road from me. So, yeah, great environment oh, for growing. Perfect, then. So, at the moment, you go to your local... Um, uh, your local cooperative or your local uh, good size garden centre, they'll have all the vegging that are seasonal now. Um, so a lot of it is like the sprouts and the winter the winter vegging we've talked about last week. But again, going back to what we always say, it really is regional here. Um, so you can start with them. Um, because you knew, don't bother with seedlings at the moment. Go for plugs. They are so cheap. They're so simple. And it gets you a few weeks ahead all, all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and all, how do I express this again in the same, without going over the same ground? Um, only grow what you're going to eat. Don't yes. feel you need to fill the box and try and plant kind of everything because it just doesn't, it doesn't work. You over, you overcompensate for it. Yeah. So for the winter, it's really basics here. It's stuff like the cabbages. Uh, I suppose you've still got time. You've still got time to do uh, the, 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 the perpetual lettuce. I know they're for sale here in Lisbon still. Uh, so you can still do a simple lettuce line. Um, and then over the winter, look at what you're eating the most of, what you're spending the most money on, and just grow a basic amount of those. So your top five, as, as I always recommend. Um, tomatoes, peppers, lettuce. God, yes, for me. Um, and just keep it very simple. Keep it small. And then when you're growing confidence, you'll grow, you're growing, you're, you're growing space will grow as well with it. Yeah. And then you won't over, you won't overface yourself. This yeah, year, yourself we've, we've got a large area. We've got a large area and no time. And it, it becomes an issue. Yes. You yes. Know, it, and it becomes so a bit keep it small. Keep it simple. Growing boxes are perfect. This time of year, you don't need to worry about your irrigation system so much, but start thinking about it now. Start buying it now because it's cheaper over the winter period. Buy the parts. And then come spring, you're ready with a simple, especially in raised beds, a simple irrigation system with a timer on it. So you don't have to think about it every day at four o'clock. Hmm. Um, and that would be money well spent. You'll stick with a simple 14, 15 year old ones at Leroy Merlin. Perfect. Fantastic. Good to know. Thank and, you very much. And listen for the show. Listen, listen to the show over the winter, and then come spring when I'm doing my seedlings or buying my plugs next year. You can follow along. Brilliant. Uh, thanks, Phil. Thanks, Matty and Victoria for your input. Um, I just wanted to add something to uh, Jacqueline's request, and um, we're just down the road from you, Jacqueline, and we 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 were with Cindy B yesterday. Uh, permaculturist Cindy B, who shared some plants with us. So there are plants to go around and to share with you. Um, Cindy gave us a, this thing that I've never tried before, the tomatillo, um, which looks like a physalis, doesn't it? Physalis or physalis, the Chinese gooseberry. Um, and it's taste, it's really got a very interesting taste. It would go beautifully yeah. in salads. It's a bit of a difference from a normal tomato. And they are gorgeous. Stuff. Aren't they yeah. amazing? First, they first time I ever ate one today in my life. Um, and the, another thing that's growing, I'm not so keen on, but you could slice this up and make pickles from it. This is a kirkamelon, which looks like a tiny watermelon and actually has a cucumbery sort of texture. Look how small it is. But that was, I, that was fascinating as well. I get to steal those quite regular. And um, I love cucumber, so you can imagine they are. You like the full, they're, really, they're really wet as well, aren't they? They're, they're, it's like a popping a... a, a Almost yeah. like popping a cherry. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Bite-sized bite -size cucumbers. That's what they are, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And then a little bit of a you – know, it, it's, it's almost like the dregs of the season, but still some lovely things in there. Our tomatoes are still going strong. You can see some very different varieties of tomatoes and a single apple uh, from one of the, the um, very young apple trees – 
different kinds of aubergines. The aubergines have been good, but squashes haven't been so good this year. Uh, but a few interesting things there from the garden. And uh, this little treasure, um, if you have a close look from the from the first floor balcony, there is a melon growing just like, hanging down there. That, that I might have to strap up or something because uh, that could drop down and either smash or hit somebody on the head. But that, it's like it appeared overnight, the most amazing thing. So, Jacqueline, come over and see us, and we'll sort you out with a few cuttings as well. Up the road from us, Jacqueline, Lloydy has put some, some seedlings in the ground as well. Look, that's a lovely – I mean, come back to that in two or three weeks, and his cabbages will have just grown massively, I suspect, as well. So that's – that's that. if you grow – a little, a little bed and put in some seedlings like that. I'm sure you're going to be very surprised and delighted with the results you get. That's what Lloyd's doing up the road from us. Thank you, Lloyd, they're for the, sharing with us. I think they look like they're in the ground, don't like they're in a, a big open space. And oh, yeah, yeah. He's done, he, if, you've got, he's, if, you, if you've got the time to do it, that's that's perfect. But they will do just as well in a raised bed and just doing yeah. two or three of them. Just yep. for this fifth year, just get used to it, get used to the routine. Don't try to... I mean, he's got well, it's like 25 30 plants there yeah he's um, got a lot a lot of space and and he never yeah. he never does anything by halves so there you yeah. go don't don't thank don't, you, don't feel the need to overgo it thank you so much lee very good advice it's a pleasure and yes do come and see us jacqueline and we'll sort you out with some uh seedlings oh lee where to get the right soil please well it's the one you've got isn't it or is she talking about buying bags of soil what's the best one to buy if she's if she's starting from scratch um It's not as good as it is in England. The compost here is not the best. No. Uh, we use we use one called Universal. It's available everywhere. It's the one they have in Leroy Merlin. Uh, it, it's good. It's good enough. But okay, if you're going to do it properly, you want to buy it now, and you want to start adding your own compost to it for next spring. That's what we all should do, but we don't. We just don't have time for it. And in the absence of that time scale, Lee, I mean, what we've been doing is composting at source. So start saving your garden waste and then yeah. chuck that in first into the bottom of the yeah. raised bed and then put the soil on top. And you won't go far wrong with that, will you? Using using green waste, it, especially if, if you're doing raised beds, buy yeah. the raised beds now. I mean, if you don't want to go over this winter, buy the raised beds now. All the grass cuttings, all the leaf mould, everything, yeah. everything just sweeps up and go into the bottom of that. It's like we talked about the uh, the Hugo culture idea of yeah. building up a, a base in the raised bed. It and that as that as that breaks down, add some goat manure, add some horse manure, it becomes then perfect. Super. And you've got it underneath the compost then as well. So it is yeah. there, it's retained, it's gonna blow away, it's gonna wash away with the rain. Yeah. Good stuff. There you go, Jacqueline. Oh, ahead. Please, yeah. Yeah, please let us know. It's lovely to have you as a as a case study. And a, and a proud participant of the Get Out and Grow community, and we'll do all we can to help you in that. Um, LLP says, uh, tomatillos here in the United States are used a lot in green sauce for Mexican food and Latin food. Pork chile, chile verde um, sounds good. Um, a bit of a, a concern for Matty, um, who spends most of his money on beer. I don't know if that's a cry for help. Uh, but can't grow that in my raised bed. What could he grow that he could ferment or brew apart from? He's got grapes in his garden, so he could brew wine, couldn't he? You, you can definitely do grapes, but you need quite a bit to make it worthwhile doing it. So what Matt should do, instead of concerning himself with growing his own, is go and help Jason, Jason help as much as he can, and hopefully yeah. Jason can give him some of his leftovers. There you go. All right. He's, so only, up, he's, he's only up the road from a neighbour. But you're in Portugal. Yeah. Your neighbours are always going to have more uh, advanced gardens, more more veg and fruit than you are. Be yeah. friendly, be nice, help each other out, and you're going to get you're going to get given stuff. Portuguese way. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll come to Phil Ruff and your ideal garden, and we'll ask out of all of us here tonight. Um, Victoria reporting that she. Do you remember Victoria's tomato plants? Thirty teeny tiny tomatoes, not the best crop from the effort put forth, but a learning experience. Well, that's good to know. Uh, not quite as much as you wanted, but... Uh, what I think, I think Vic Victoria's had already passed when she messaged us, and the advice was to um, manually... She was manually... Uh, ...around the earbud and do the yeah. bees' job for them. So, yeah, I think we were at the end of the season then. OK. It could have been worse, uh, by the sound of it. Uh, we've got a maracuja now, the uh, passion fruit, growing like crazy. We're going to mount it on the wall... Ua, and train it around the cover uh, to cover the wall. Flowers are crazy; look like aliens. They are beautiful, aren't they? Passion flowers, uh, which yeah. I think you can eat. You can eat passion flowers as well as the fruit, can't you? 
You can, but why would you want to? Because they're beautiful. Why? Why they're one of my favorite. One of my favorite flowers. I, I, they are just very special. The gorgeous. Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, they are. They, they are science fiction, aren't they? Great. Thanks again, says Jacqueline. And mugwort, a plant tradition. Uh, what do you what do you what do you mean there, Simon? Are you, is that a recommendation? Oh, I see. Mugwort, you can grow it. Used to flavor the mug in beer before hops. Okay, there you go. Mugwort. That's interesting. Be careful with plant identification. Make sure you're you're picking and using the right thing if you're going to be eating it. Um, and grape says Phil from the vineyard next door have been collected today. Matty needs to find where they went. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? Okay, then Phil's favorite ideal garden, a forest. Food forest, a food forest, citrus, apples, pears, berries, perennials, out the door with plenty of wildlife to share the surplus with. Yeah, with the emphasis on sharing rather than it being completely raided by the wildlife. He's got wild boar on his land. Um, the forest is the morning and evening walk together. That does sound idyllic. Uh, Lee, what would be yours? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get abused for this, but mine would be um, a bowling green, a perfect green lawn. That I use <laughs> chemicals on all the time. That I have to feed, I have to fertilize, I have to cut twice a week. Yeah, and that gets to just look at and never walk on it because it's too precious. And you shout at local kids who walk on it. Yeah, get off my green. Yeah, you know, I can. I mean, this this goes back to the stereotypes that uh, John was talking about earlier on. The parky stereotype. Get out of here, you rotten kids. Yeah, wait till I tell your parents. Um, okay, so a, 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 like a, a perfectly manicured bowling green for Lee, food forest for Phil, um, Anna and John. Anna, what would you have as your perfect garden, do you think? I mean, you've visited quite a few, haven't you? And I think John has as well. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. So I, I, I know there are definitely sort of um, plants that I see that I quite like. I think I'm a bit of a one for colour, I think, because I mean, even like seeing um, red hot pokers and... Um, that sort of thing. Um, I would say if sweet peas were slightly easier, I'd probably choose some of those as well. Um, um, as my dad would probably say, layering is a bit of an, uh, bit of a nightmare, so uh, possibly some easy sweet peas. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I'm, I'm yeah, traditional think... British. Traditional I British. Can imagine, I can imagine Anna in a cottage garden. Yes, yes, that's what I was thinking. No, no, no lawn, just a mix of vegetables and flowers. And yeah, just... beautiful. Little hat on a little beehive in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And admiring the bird life, visiting the bird table as well. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Which you're more likely to get, aren't you, in England? Because we, we struggle trying to attract bird life to bird tables in Portugal. Here we've talked about it before. Whereas yours, Anna, you get woodpeckers and squirrels. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, yes, certainly get quite a, a mix. I think pigeons, blackbirds, uh, robins, um, yeah, blue tits, great tits. I think, um, yeah, I, I haven't seen as many finches as um, as, I, as I used to. We did used to get gold finches, green finches, and bull finches, but I don't, I don't know if um, they're elsewhere at the moment or if it's the wrong food out. But um, yeah, they're always. Good to see because of the colour and Definitely. um cottage garden, yeah. then I'm thinking. Yeah, thank you for that, Anna. Red hot pokers. If you, if and, you want uh, more finches in Anna, add more like sunflower seeds. Yeah. Um they go mad for the bigger, the bigger seed. So the bigger sunflower seeds and the big dark seeds that you can buy in the mixes. They they much yeah. prefer those than nuts and um small seeds. Oh uh, yes, yeah, I think I found that. I think the niger seed they hard, hardly hardly went at all and the sunflower. Uh, seed seems to go quite quite quick so uh, yeah i'll keep trying those great stuff thank you anna john your ideal garden um it'd be quite nice to have a, a bit of a lawn um maybe a few trees uh some bit of veg but i quite also quite like a stream or a river flowing through the garden yeah i'm with you which on is that. quite a lot to ask i know but it would be quite cool no, it's your idea. You can have what you want in this scenario. You're in your dream garden. I, and I'm with you both. Um, I do like a lawn. You know, a lot of um, a permaculturists and, and organic growers, you know, the progressive gardeners just want to do away with lawns. Don't know. I think that's why Lee takes a bit of a pleasure. We're getting in trouble, aren't we? We're going to get in trouble for yeah. this. We want, a lot, we want a lawn, a barbecue and a bar, and, that, and we'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I quite like a rally stage or something like that as well. <laughs> on that cross track. I'm, okay. I'm going to get in proper trouble. Just tell Mac it, John. John, just, just tell Mac it. Yeah. 
<laughs> John just wants a garage then. <laughs> Basically, okay, fair enough. Thank you for that question. It's not Fiona, it's the Dean machine, or as he know, as he's also known, the baby duckling. Um, so animals, we haven't talked about, well, apart from Anna, you, you're a welcoming birds to your garden. John, would you want to keep in animals? Uh, yes, I would actually. I quite like feeding the birds and, um, okay. the, yeah, that, that would be a cool thing to have as well. And would you have chickens? I, it's just really hard to know, loves. like, what would my ideal garden would be. There's so many things that keep coming into my brain of what well, an if you ideal had tarmac, garden would be. Yeah, if you had tarmac and you kept chickens, you could finally lay to rest the question, why did the chicken cross the road? You could have all of that going on in your own back garden. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, there you go. So thank you very much, Baby Duckling. The man is about six foot eight. Why he's called Baby Duckling, I can't remember. Uh, but he's fessed up and says it is I, Baby Duckling, um, in the comments there. Thank you very much for that, Dean Machine, for asking that question. I think we're coming towards the end of the show. Um, you did meet the king, the man who is now the king, Lee McGrady. Uh, dare you tell us a little bit about that? Very, very. I didn't meet him. I was at, um, uh, the same at the, I was at the opening of the Oster Island in one of his gardens. Uh, he's the... Um, I just call him the chairman of the British Oster Society. And Osters are, as we all know, loved by slugs in the UK. Yes. Um, so to protect them, he creates an island with a moat around it. And the island was for the royal collection of Osters. And I was lucky enough to... Uh, I was involved with, uh, with Marley. It's like a, an old culture college in, just behind Blackpool. And we were lucky enough to get an invite down for the opening of it. That was a long oh. time ago. I was I had to buy a shirt to go. Well, yeah, it was a, it was a it was a nice event, and it was nice to see it. And it's it and just the shows the, the money that goes into protecting plants as well. They must have spent a yeah. fortune on it. Yeah. So the only way a slug would get there is if a bird carried it across, or you know something like that. Well, that would be extremely unfortunate because then they'd have to take all the soil out and restart again. But. Um, <laughs> The gardener yeah. could only get up in a boat. <laughs> you know, he had a the gardener yeah, had a special plank of wood. The gardener had a special plank of wood that would just reach over, so he could what he could cut across into it to keep the weeds down. But yeah, I've got, I, believe it's, I believe it's still there. It's Googleable. It? Google and it. it's again, hosta is very much a British traditional plant, isn't it? As you would see in a cottage yeah. garden as well, if it's not been ravaged by slugs. And they're not the prettiest of plants. They're nothing. We have one in the garden here. Uh, they're not the prettiest plants. They're just a leaf. No. And yeah. you get a really poor show of flower on for a short amount of time. But yeah. they're grown for the for the leaf shape and the leaf pattern and the leaf coloration. So yeah, I, I, kind yeah, of, I love them. They're kind of corrugated, aren't they? The leaves. It really depends. There's a million varieties. There's there's okay. you know you could imagine the amount of variation in a in a in a, in a leaf. Yeah. Uh, there's guys that are just obsessed with them. Guys and girls that are obsessed with them. And they're developing yeah. new osters and naming them all the time. So, Amazing. Thank uh, you for that. Yeah. Thank you for that. And your brush with royalty there. Um, last few comments then coming in in the last minutes of the show tonight. Buy fresh local. Uh, buy fresh, buy local. It helps support our farmers and garden centers. It's a very good sentiment. Thank you for expressing that. Lucky to be able to do so in, in a lot of towns in Portugal. Go to the uh, municipal mercado. Uh, to the market every day and you'll be able to do that to some extent um unless of course they've got this from a wholesaler and they're just putting it out in the market but you can you can start a relationship with the local market holders and find out if they've grown it for themselves on a smaller scale it's a great sentiment simon thank you for that um i think this is dean again apparently you can ferment nearly anything i can't imagine chilling beer that would be very good for your taste buds though Oh, okay. Well, um, there, there are there are certain plants that you can you can go and forage for to make to make your home brew with. Um, okay. Maybe that's, that's another show altogether. Another yeah. special, by the sound of it. Okay. And uh, Phil, uh, feeling our pain here, I find it a challenge that the birds don't need to be fed here in Portugal. Is anyone feeding birds in Portugal? Does it ever happen, Lee, or is it just not a thing? I really don't think so. It's just it's just so many insects. I'm, I've sat with Carl now, and when we're back in the UK. We had bird feeders in the garden and I would sit in his front window with the camera all morning, yeah. you know, and they would come up to the window. And it was here for two years, my feeder, um, full of seed and they'd never been once. And this can hear him. He just said, we, got, we brought a bird feeder from the UK and we fed it for two years and hoping that we would encourage things to come. And they just never did. But we do get a nice little variety in the garden of birds coming yeah. na feed naturally. But trying yes, to hold them yeah. here is impossible. Yeah. Wow. Um, wow. But again, 
growing growing loads and loads of sunflowers if you've got the space yeah. will will bring in the birds we'll for that short two windows when they're all in seed. Yeah. That, that, okay. That's been well, there success. you go. That's the best we can possibly do for you, Phil. And another picture. I can't not show these couple of pictures that have come in because they're fantastic uh, to conclude tonight. One of them is uh, Maria uh, of, of, of Maria and Phil, and she has planted bok choy. I think there should be enough to go out here. That's a really nice bit of planting. And that's what Jacqueline can do, isn't it? Is make a little bit of a bed within the garden, uh, put, some, put some wood chippings around it and some nice compost in the middle where all the bok choy um, have been planted and i think uh, maria very satisfied uh with that planting there um, how, many yeah. people is she, how many people is she feeding that's gonna be I, a hell of a harvest i think she's up for a bit of stir fry every day with the box every day for the next five years if you can if you can maintain it yeah that's well, lovely. She's, doing the thing, she's doing the thing you're talking about uh, which is to grow what she likes eating and i know she loves bok choy because she was delighted when she saw it in our garden this the last picture of the day then the good regatta. Um, it was chili beer, not chill beer, uh, from the Dean machine. Uh, look at this. Um, the good regatta, hollowed out pumpkins, and you sail down the river in them. Have you ever done this, Lee McGrady? You seem the rugged sort of type who might do that. I've been kayaking, I've never kayaked in a hollowed out fruit no, or vegetable now. Just think of it. I, I, I had some massive courgettes this year that I could have put one on each foot and skied on them. <laughs> <laughs> So let's do it. Let's do the Horticultural Olympics next year. Hollowed out gourds, uh, courgettes big enough to stick on your feet and ski with. with. This has got legs. This idea, it could be very good and, and take gardening to a whole new audience. Uh, thank you very much, guys. As Victoria says, lovely show tonight. Obrigadinha. We'll see you again next Monday evening at 6.15. Thank you so much for being here. Well done, team. Thanks, John. Thanks, Anna. Thank you, Head Gardener McGrady. Ciao, ciao. Bye for now.